top 10 Sri Lanka travel destinations. My name is Steve Yallo. In this video, I want to bring you around to some of my favorite places in this country. And mind you, these are just my favorite places. There are still so many more places to explore. But with that being said, let's start the video. Alright, here we go, starting with number 10, Anuradhapura. What a name. This ancient city is the capital of the north central province in Sri Lanka. It's one of the oldest continuously inhabited cities in the world. This area is most famous for these giant stupas and well preserved ruins of an ancient Buddhist civilization. And here we have what's known as the oldest tree in the world. This is a Bodhi tree. It's actually derived from the original Bodhi tree where it's believed that Buddha sat under and achieved enlightenment. And it's called the oldest tree in the world because it's the oldest known planted tree. Some important things to know, if you want to explore the main sites of this area, you will need to pay an admission fee of 25 US dollars per person. Another important thing is your clothing. Since this is a highly regarded religious destination, all of these sites require you to dress appropriately by covering your shoulders and knees. I came here with my friend Tal and we had a nice time appreciating and admiring these sacred places, but I think we had the most fun with our spontaneous adventures trying to find new jobs helping some locals. What's going on here, Tal? I just joined the assembly line and I came to <laughs> Come on, everybody! <laughs> Welcome to Sri Lanka, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Alright, so our agreement was if we finish cleaning out this whole back, which we just did, then they're gonna let us drive the tractor. You think he's a good tractor driver? Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I'm driving a tractor, baby! Yeah! Next up, coming in at number 9, we have Jaffna. Located at the tippy top of the island, Jaffna is the capital city of the northern province of Sri Lanka. This is an area of the country often skipped by many travelers. Jaffna has been a territory of severe conflict and tension, so it's important to understand its history. Up until 2009, Sri Lanka was divided by a brutal civil war. While the entire country was affected by this, the north suffered the worst damage. With that being said, the area is now safe and growing in popularity for travelers. So today, we're getting a little local experience. There's a bazaar here in Jaffna, some local markets. here at the bazaar in Jaffna and there are a lot of options for clothing. I think it's time we try to look a little bit more local and see if we can find some new outfits today. Steven's gonna go really well doing that. Yeah. <laughs> Jaffna may not have such attractive features like breathtaking mountain views or wildlife safaris like some other areas may have, but what attracts most visitors here is a raw, authentic travel experience. Real quick, before we go to our next location, just want to mention the sponsor of this video, Trift. Trift is a platform inspiring unconventional and sustainable travel to places people don't often talk about, working closely to support travel to hidden niches of the world. They curate content and advice from experienced travelers, so this is a great resource to plan your adventures. In light of the current travel restrictions, they're creating cinematic virtual experiences with creators all around the world. And right now, you can join the early sign up for free tickets to these virtual experiences. And I'm even teaming up with Trift to create a Sri Lanka virtual experience. If you join the early sign up, 10 lucky winners are getting free tickets to these virtual experiences and the rest will get 50% off. If this sounds cool to you, find the link in the description under this video. Okay, let's continue with our next destination. Moving on to number eight, we have Trinko Mali or more commonly referred to as just Trinko. 
This is a major port city located on the east coast of Sri Lanka. Most travelers are interested in coming here for the beautiful beaches and things that come with it. Scuba diving and whale watching are some of the most popular water activities. Upaveli Beach is one of the most well-known, but you can find Nilaveli Beach a bit to the north, which tends to be a bit quieter. There's nobody here. We are the only humans on this beach. There are a few dogs, but we're the only humans. <laughs> fort Frederick is an old fort built by the Portuguese, and it's a nice, quiet contrast from the busy town. Inside Fort Frederick, you can follow the road until the end, which leads to the colorful Hindu Koneshwaram Temple. You can walk through the temple to admire the mesmerizing, colorful, artistic depictions of Hindu history. During my visit, I stayed at a small hostel called the Social Shack, which organized some nice activities like a local cooking class and a boat trip with a local fisherman. Oh! First catch of the day. Just put it in! Just put it in! You got another one? Another one. No way. Dude, it's been, it hasn't even been a minute. What the hell? He's got two on one line! <laughs> oh shoot! <laughs> I don't really like animals. <laughs> We even went back to this fisherman's home to see his village and meet his family. Moving down the east coast brings us to our next location, coming in at number 7, Aragam Bay. Hey, what did the ocean say to the beach? Nothing. It just waved. And that's what makes this place so popular. Aragam Bay was once a quiet fishing village, but the consistent waves attracted surfers from all around the world. So this town has developed into a hub for backpackers. There's only one road in town and it runs parallel to the beach filled with restaurants, bars, hostels, and plenty of barefoot hippies walking around. During the high season, you can find parties every weekend, but during the low season, this town becomes rather quiet. High season in Aragon Bay is about April to October, and low season is November through March. It's good to know that the seasons alternate on the east and south coast. So while it's low season in Aragon Bay, it's high season at beaches down south. So there's always a spot for surfing and beautiful beach weather no matter what time of the year. If you're still watching this right now, please click that like button and subscribe for more adventures. All right, let's get back to the video. Moving on to our next destination, we have New Aurelia. So we made it to the top here of Single Tree Hill, which has the best view of the entire town of New Aurelia. And one really interesting thing about this town, it's a little bit different than the rest of the country of Sri Lanka. One, it's a little bit elevated, so it tends to be colder here. And also, this is where the British occupied. This is where they lived, because it resembles kind of what some parts of England look like. So. As you explore the town, you might be able to see up here, there's a lake back there. That's a man-made lake built by the British, and a lot of the architecture here resembles an old English style. So it's really different from the other parts of Sri Lanka, but really interesting to come here and see all that. While it is nice to explore the center of town, my favorite parts are the outskirts, driving through the windy mountain roads where you can enjoy stunning views of lush green landscapes. If you're up for a scenic adventure, check out Rambota Falls, about 45 minutes away from New Aurelia. When I traveled around Sri Lanka, I decided to rent a tuk-tuk so I can drive myself around and have the freedom to stop wherever and whenever I want. But I do just want to mention that there's a certain train that has become quite popular around here. This blue train has been gaining a lot of popularity on Instagram as a lot of people have been sharing photos hanging out of the train which is just stupid. Come on, who would do something like this? Really? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Obviously, I've done this before, but it's not something I would encourage as it is dangerous hanging out of a moving train. But most people are interested in riding this train for the incredible mountain views passing through what feels like endless tea plantations. And just a quick travel tip, the first class train car locks all of the windows and doors because the air condition is on, so if you are looking for that open air experience, do not buy a ticket for first class. The main line starts in Kandy, it runs through New Aurelia, and brings you to our next destination, coming in at number 5, Ella. This small town in the hill country has become a hot spot for travelers with some chilled out hostels and beautiful options for accommodation. Iconic spots around here include the Nine Arch Bridge, 
which that blue train actually passes over. And if you're up for a hike, be sure to check out Ella Rock or Little Adams Peak for some really nice views. And about an hour drive outside of Ella, you can find the epic Dealuma Falls, where you can hike through some trails to get to the top for some incredible views. And there are different tiers of waterfalls up there, so you can swim and hang out, and it is just a great nature adventure. Moving down the list to number four is Sigiriya. Located in the center of Sri Lanka, Sigiriya is an ancient city most commonly known for Lion Rock. And this has a crazy history involving some royal brotherly betrayal. I already made a video that dives deeper into explaining this in detail, so if you want to see that, I'll leave a link in the description of this video. I also have individual videos from each location I've mentioned so far, so if you want more information about a certain location, find the links below. Anyway, back to Sigiriya. Well, actually, I want to talk about more than just Lion Rock because I think that's what most people picture when they think of this area, but there are so many really amazing things to do around here. For example, right near Lion Rock is an even bigger crazy looking rock that you can hike up called Pidurangala. Just want to quickly talk about the difference between this rock and Lion Rock, which is sometimes known as the more famous rock. One of the main differences is the cost, because coming here, we paid 500 rupees, which is the equivalent to like two and a half US dollars. The other one costs over 30 US dollars per person. So significant price difference. If you are more into the history side of travel, uh, you like ancient archeology, span then the other one has more of that for sure. There is a whole ancient garden in front of Lion Rock. And then when you get up to the top, there are ancient ruins because there was a palace built on top there thousands of years ago. So it is more, I would say, maybe preserved history as as this obviously also has history, but it's more for the hike, nature, and the viewpoint up top. If you want some more cool ancient places, check out Dambula Cave Temple. And not too far away is Kaudula National Park. You can go on safari here to see large herds of elephants. Oh, Sri Lanka, pretty as can be. Where you see the elephants roaming far and free. Another option that's even closer to Sigiriya, and usually cheaper too, is hiring a jeep safari driver to take you in Huluru Eco Park in Habarana. You may not see large herds of elephants like in Kaudula, but when I went we saw some smaller herds of these beautiful animals right up close. And now, since we're talking about elephants, let's jump to our next location on the list, Udawalawe. There are 22 national parks in Sri Lanka and Udawalawe is my personal favorite. Probably because of the elephants. Just so many elephants. He's gonna go back and bark at it, look at it. What a little idiot. Don't do it. <laughs> Oh my god! A little different than what we just mentioned in Kaudula National Park where you might see large herds of 20, 30, 40 elephants together, but they can be a little far away. Here in Udawalawe, you might not see that many at one time, but they're scattered all over. So you see different elephants throughout your safari and they tend to come much closer to the vehicle too. So you see them so close. And the landscape around here is just so beautiful. When you drive down the main road that borders the national park and opens up to this large reservoir of water bordered by a wall of mountains, it just feels like you're in Jurassic Park or something. Another interesting and somewhat controversial thing is how the main road runs next to the national park. And there is an electric fence that divides the road from the park, but elephants are known to come up to this fence. Unfortunately, it's because people tend to feed them, so now the elephants are getting dependent on this fruit and food. It's a topic that I'm not gonna go deep into, but with that being said, it is just such a surreal experience seeing this wild elephant up close, so close. God, it scares me every time. 
But yeah, Udawalawe is just a special place. And since we're talking about national parks, another really popular one is Yala National Park. I do love that park as well, even though it did not make this list because I've mentioned it in so many other videos. Figured I'd give some other parks a time to shine. Okay, already down to number two. This chilled out surf paradise is my favorite spot on the south coast of Sri Lanka. It's called Hirikatiya. I mean, just look at that. It's a perfect cove, consistent waves, and just really relaxing vibes all around here. And right around the corner is Dikwela Beach, super quiet area, an amazing spot to catch the sunset. And although I'm giving Hirikatiya the number two spot, I'm really giving the number two spot to the entire South Coast. But I did just make a complete travel guide for the South Coast, so if you have any interest in going down south, which you definitely should, it's incredible, check out that video for more juicy travel tips about the South Coast. Do it. <laughs> okay, we have made it, ladies and gentlemen. The number one travel destination, in my opinion, in Sri Lanka is, drum roll please, the Knuckles Mountain Range. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, wow, look at that. Located near the center of the country, this gorgeous mountain range has been recognized as a UNESCO Natural World Heritage Site for its unique biodiversity that can't be found anywhere else on this planet. With 34 mountains to explore and nature trails galore, this is a paradise for hikers. Waterfalls, dense forests, and endless mesmerizing viewpoints, the Knuckles Mountain Range is truly special. In fact, the reason I'm selecting this as my number one destination in Sri Lanka is because I haven't really explored it much. I spent two days in this area, I did one quick hike, but there's so, so much more for me to explore. And when I go back to Sri Lanka, this is where I want to go. If you go here, there's a cozy little guest house called the Pepper Cottage. I stayed here for a couple nights, and like I said, it's just an amazing area, and I really, really want to go back here just to explore more. And that concludes the top 10 travel destinations in Sri Lanka. If you enjoyed, click that like button and subscribe for more. Again, these are just my opinions. I haven't traveled everywhere in Sri Lanka. I know there's still so much more to explore. So I will definitely be coming back to make more videos about some lesser known parts of Sri Lanka. So if you have some more to look forward to, go watch some more videos. There are plenty about Sri Lanka and other places all around the world. So I'll see you there, peace. Estudi, estudi, estudi.